Well, good morning, everybody. It is 10 o'clock straight up, so let's go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are starting a new series of webinars that are going to highlight products that integrate with Sage 100 that hopefully will help your productivity and, and ease of use and, and uh, ease of our nerves in, in these trying times that we're in. So for today's webinar, we are featuring a product called AP Automation by Beanworks. And I would like to uh, introduce to you Christian, um, Ty and I, and I, I promise I tried not to, to butcher her last name there. She is from Beanworks, and she is here to review their product with you. So Kristen, go ahead and take it away. All right, beautiful. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all having a great morning, and um, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. So we'll go ahead and just kind of jump into it. Um, and we appreciate you all joining. So the webinar is going to be all on how to streamline and automate your accounts payable workflow. So like I said, we'll go ahead and, and, and jump right into it. Oh, give me a sec. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so um, like Sue mentioned, my name is Kristen Tyna and I'll be your host for today. Um, I am a channel development manager here at Sage AP Automation, also known as Beanworks. Um, and I work with clients and partners to better understand their AP workflow with the goal of minimizing the client's um, spend on each step. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump into it. Um, we are going to cover common practices that cause friction in these four main areas listed above. Um, and then what we're going to do is explain how we can simplify these processes by adopting both automated and non-automated solutions. And then towards the end, we'll give you a peek into our platform. So um, we do have a Q&A chat on the screen here. Please feel free to use that at any time during the webinar. I'll make sure to go ahead and get those answers or those questions answered at the end. Um, so just hang with me there. All right, let's jump right into the first one, which is purchase orders. So some of the biggest concerns within this workflow have really been around a manual heavy procurement process, right? Um, the problem is that most businesses either rely on an informal requisition process or they don't have one altogether. So this creates a lack of visibility and unapproved purchases, which in turn typically disrupts large um, month and Ta or large tasks like month and close, and it can also allow employees to spend without appropriate approvals. And as you guys are aware, I know anyone who's familiar with that process, they know how difficult um, that makes, or they know how difficult it makes those accounting teams to track information like that. So how do we fix this? First of all, it is crucial to establish a more formal requisition process with necessary PO forms for every purchase. Second, creating an approval network to manage your department spend. Uh, this ensures that your department managers are taking responsibility for each purchase um, and that they will understand that it will be charged against their budget. If you wanna take this one step further, you can actually automate your requisition process. So some benefits include um, customized purchasing and spending limits. So that ensures that spend is, in, is within the policy. And then with a formal or more formalized process in place, it also controls who's able to buy what and how much they can spend. So specifically within Beanworks, they can set limits based on department, project, ben, vendor, or set manager budgets to control unapproved purchases. In addition, it eliminates double data entry by automatically matching POs to invoice. And lastly, you can preview budget and forecast through a central dashboard, which measures how all of this is contributing to your overall financial growth. All right, so let's keep moving on to the next workflow. You guys will see invoices. So during the pandemic, um, so it really brought a rapid switch to remote work, um, pretty fast, pretty unexpected, right? And the manual processes have made it difficult for staffs to continue to work remote. And we actually saw that research showed finance teams had to continue going into the office during the pandemic just to complete simple tasks like obtaining invoices or pulling paper files. So businesses that are experiencing slow invoice processing are often stuck with a few different things um, 
one being manual data entry and errors. I mean, this comes with the need to update multiple systems, the same data essentially in multiple systems. Um, we're all human. We all know that human uh, that everybody makes mistakes. Um, and so with a lot of manual data, we'll um, almost always come with some error, obviously. Next, we have in, informal approval channels. So think emails and paper. Um, those are major contributors to slow invoice processing cycles as well. With manual intervention involved really in every step, it gets difficult to spot duplicate invoices. Um, one report actually found that 63% of businesses had received du duplicate invoices, of which 33% had actually paid them. So if we pause to think about that, that means that half of the businesses that were sent duplicate invoices paid those out, which is wild to me because, I mean, maybe if it's a, a smaller charge, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but if this is a larger invoice, you can see how frustrating that could be. So let's see how we can tackle these challenges um, while using an AP automation software. Sorry, my clicking and the PowerPoint aren't totally on. I'll work on that. Um, so AP automation uses AI powered data to um, capture, or AI powered data capture, right? And so it is it is extracts invoice details such as amounts, due dates, invoices, um, date, vendor name, description, unit cost, and quantities. It will automatically flag duplicate invoices in the system so that you don't have to worry about tracking them manually. Um, and then our automated platform also comes with internal approval systems, which allows you to track the entire approval chain in real time. So from when it's sent, for approval, how long it stayed in the approver's inbox to the date and time that it was finally approved. All right, um, next we're going to unpack the payments workflow, which was significantly affected by the pandemic. Um, so many organizations are still experiencing challenges caused by a low cash flow economy, supply chain, dis uh, disruptors, changes in vendor payment preferences, and remote work conditions, and, and, and many more, more things, really. Um, in our recent state of AP study, surveying over 600 financial professionals across North America, we actually found that three areas within payments that were severely impacted. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first challenge, and perhaps one of the most one that the most accounting teams are can relate to is um, late payments. So on average, it, businesses in North America took as long as 58 days to pay vendors and suppliers in the first quarter of 2021. Um, this was up by 5.5% from the first quarter in 2020, where the average payment period was 55 days. I think it'll be pretty interesting to see how that number actually changes this year. Um, so then next concern is the remote access to payment based processes. So 57% of 600 businesses were unable to make payments while working remote last year. We could assume that most of this was their reliance on traditional or paper based processes. And that was really what was to blame. While keeping the financial engine running, accounting teams also have to be aware of sophisticated scams targeting companies. Uh, really of all size. We've seen a flurry of unusual financial transactions, expediting orders, change of banking information, and new payment methods during this time of uncertainty. An urgent request that might have raised some eyebrows in the past might not seem so alarming during a pandemic, and it really makes it hard for AP teams to identify different signs of fraud. Even the most experiencing, experienced teams are running into these roadblocks today. Um, so how do we make sure that this isn't happening within your organization? So I would say consider introducing a few of these practices into your payment routines um, that can make you more secure and efficient. All right, so first off, separate the approval chain for invoices and payments. Um, by separating roles for approvals and payments, you can reduce the chance for funds to be routed or otherwise misappropriated for. If late or missed payments are your primary area of concern, it might be beneficial to explore third-party payment solutions such as novice pay. They manage their vendor data for you and they also take 100% liability for all payments. Next, you can start using a bank change form to initiate change orders 
um, and vendor banking details. In addition, you should always ask questions, confirm the, legitis the legitimacy. So for example, their payment date or their last invoice amount. And then lastly, but definitely not least, I think it's super important to train your staff on how to identify signs of fraud. So for instance, understanding how to detect phishing emails um, or invoices that don't have vendor information, such as addresses or phone numbers or vendors uh, or vendors that just don't use business emails, email addresses. Um, instead, they're using things, something like uh, a Gmail or like an Outlook, providers that are free. So now, while these changes are a good practice just to implement and some best practices in the industry, you can also identify enjoying additional fraud protection with an automated solution. So, um, you know, this all being said, automating your payments will actually simplify a bulk of these worries. Like I mentioned, um, first and foremost, you can pay your vendors in the preferred method of their payments. So whether that be ACH, EFT, VCC, or paper checks, um, you could also automatically route payments to approvers and then leave the software um, to do all of the chasing for reminders and follow-ups, which is super helpful um, for you and it eliminates some time. And then also to help combat the risk of fraud, solutions like Beanworks provides an approval matrix that can be customized based on amount, department, city, vendor, et cetera. All right, let's keep going. Um, now we're gonna talk about expenses. So expense management has evolved and expenses, expense policies from the remote work area look very different um, than what they used to look like in a pre-pandemic world. I'm sure everyone is super familiar with that. I'm sure um, all of yours has changed quite a bit. So the issue with the traditional way of managing expenses and reimbursing employees is that it's super time consuming, right? So sifting through the stacks of paper receipts to verify the details takes up valuable time each month. Moreover, filing and processing receipts in involves too many steps like printing, scanning, coding, and a lot more. So it's actually why 45% of CFOs are saying that they want to minimize the administrative burden um, in their expense processing, and that it's actually their number one priority. So the next challenge is reducing the risk of expense abuse, right? So last year, 62% of businesses actually encountered out-of-pocket expenses. With so much intricacy involved in manually managing day-to-day -day expenses, it becomes really hard to maintain that data accuracy and that often leads to errors. So according to the Global Business Travel Association, on average, one in every five expense reports actually contains some kind of errors on it. One in five, which is wild to me. Um, and actually automating expense management, that'll give your business the tool to dynamically engage with employees. It accelerates expense management and reimbursement by allowing employees to submit expense reports through web or mobile app for reimbursement. And then once approved by the manager, the AP team can actually re reimburse them electronically. You can also flag expenses that exceed your set limit. These can be customized based on factors such as department, budget, role, et cetera, really giving you the greater control and visibility over your employees. With automated expenses, you can also eliminate double data entry, which I think is key here. Um, and it does this by mapping expense categories directly to your existing GL code, saving your accounting team time and resources. So the finance solutions contributing to the growth in the remote work era are platforms that have all in one accounts payable workflows in one place. This ensures all the necessary information is accurate and available in real time. When searching for an AP, um, an AP automation solution, look for a solution that ties in all the functions in one platform. Think purchase orders, invoice, payments, and expenses. That's how we do it at Beanworks. All AP processes and data stored in one system. And then this means that no spreadsheets and random software shared by individual departments. Information flows seamlessly across all workflows and into your final financial ERP, providing a smooth AP experience for all your accounting staff, whether they're working from office, home, or really anywhere else. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to hop in now to a product demo. I'm just going to give a high level overview um, of the product. So just give me one second here. So pull it up. All right. And we can see this, correct? That is correct. We can see it. Okay, beautiful. So what I'm going to do here is start, oops, wrong one, in the in progress tab. Okay, so I'm going to, um, like I said, hop into a quick demo here. This is VMworks. Um, one thing that I want to quickly say, just keep in mind, this is going to be a really quick, uh, brief overview. I'm going to focus mostly on the invoice module. Um, so if you'd like a more in-depth one, um, we can definitely, we'd be happy to go through that afterwards or we'd, at a later time. So just um, hang on to our contact information and we can definitely do that. So quickly, let me give you an overview of the home screen here. As you'll see, we have our four main modules on the left, expenses, purchase orders, invoices, and payments. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on invoices today as this is the bread and butter of our product and, and kind of where we want to start. Okay, um, so then at the top, you'll see the workflow, um, and this is the life cycle of the invoice. So while we see say with create, in progress, approvals, move to export, and then archived. And then next, you'll see the workstation in the center right here. The last good thing to note is that on the side right here, we have the organization structure. So this can be either as complex or as simplified as you need it to be. It can be broken down by entity, division, department, and location really whatever is best for you. Um, let me give you a quick example of what I'm working with. So if you see Green Bean Co. right here, this is actually our parent company. And what I've done is I've broken down, broken down all the entities below. And then within each entity, I've actually broken down the department. So we have a lot of um, different options that we can work with here. And again, whatever works best with your company. Well, another cool thing that I quickly wanted to note is that we do allow for unlimited user access so that you can have as many people as you'd like to access the system. Now, that being said, we can also restrict what everyone sees. So, for example, if you have your accounting and finance team that needs to see, that is with your parent company and needs to see every entity and every invoice that's being processed, we can go ahead and give them access to everything. Or if it's just a specific entity, we can give them um, access to their specific entity. And this holds true for the entire platform and all the different modules as well. So it really just depends what everyone needs. Um, and like I said, we'll make it applicable to each role. All right, so let's start out with invoices here and how to get them into the system, because I think that's kind of where we start. Um, so we have a few different ways to do so, right? First off, we have electronically. So what we'll do is we'll set you up with the Beanworks email address, and then anything that is forward to that email will automatically be fed into your system here in the In Progress tab. The other option and thing that we can do is you can do it through our mobile app. All you have to do is take a picture of the invoice, and then that will automatically upload here as well. And then finally, um, the other option that we're still seeing is the paper-based ones. So those will need to be scanned and uploaded here onto the Create tab. Um, a cool thing about this is that you can upload everything all at once and then drag them, drop, drag and drop them into one file. Um, so we do have a PDF editor in our platform. So just with the click of the button here, um, so you can see them all here, you can split them up as needed. And then this will all become single PDFs. You can move them around. It's pretty easy to, to mix and move however you like. Um, so I think that that's pretty helpful there. And then once these are all completed to your liking, where you'd like them, you just hit save and then everything will move on over into this in progress tab here. So the next step is going to be tagging the invoice. So once uploaded into our system, um, it'll automatically tag the invoice and capture the, uh, one second. there we go, beautiful. Oh, it will automatically, um, capture the header, the vendor, the invoice number, the dates, total taxes, and sub subtotals. And then all that's left really is the line item details, right? And there are a few different ways that you can input that information into the system. So the first way, if there is a corresponding PO, the system will automatically match 
um, will automatically match the PO to the invoice, right? So you can see that right here. Um, and then you can also do a split view so you can see the PO and the invoice side by side. Now, all you have to do is you can click on the PO adoption and then all line items from the PO will populate under the line item here. And then that will eliminate some double data entry for you there. Finally, our newest feature is line item capture. Um, where we use an OCR technology to smart code the descriptions, line details, including subtotals, totals, and, and it'll all populate here. Now, at this point, nothing is hard coded so that you can actually use inline editing to make adjustments if needed. So you just click and you can edit here. You can type in what you want or you can search. So beautiful. Once you've gone through all this, your invoice looks good to go. You can go ahead and click submit for approval. Now, one thing to keep in mind about building out approval workflows is that we can do it based on any criteria, so such as dollar amount, vendor, account number, class, really whatever you'd like. And then from a, an approver perspective, they receive a daily email notification. And from there, you can use your web browser or a mobile app to approve on the go. So I can give you an example of what it looks like here. Um, this is what their approval will see, and they can either approve or reject. And then please know if you do want to reject it, you do have to leave a comment right here as to why. Beautiful. So once approved, it will all flow over into the export tab over here. Um, and essentially what this is, is taking all this information and sending it back into your financial system, right? Um, so what you'll have to do is you'll have to select the bills that you want to send back. Um, you can either you can organize it in batches or select everything at once and then you'll select actions export all data and it will flow seamlessly into back into your financial system so essentially just how you're entering it today from there everything will move over to this archive tab the archive tab here and you could think of this tab within our system as your own filing cabinet right so if you ever need to pull anything up or run any reports you can use the global search feature up top here and type in keywords, or you have the ability to create different filters um, and reports over here. So now for reporting options and what I kind of think is cool, you just go to over here to report and you can either create a CSV or a PDF. Uh, I created a PDF ahead of time for you, so I'll go ahead and pull that over. This is what it looks like. So the first page will be a, um, a summary page of everything, all of your invoices for you here. Um, and then you have the ability to click on any of these hyperlinks and take you directly to that page, right? So you can see all the different invoices that we have. Um, now, what's cool about this is that you can see what's all in the, what's all in the invoice. And then also you can see, Let's see, here we go. This is what I was looking for. You can see what's all in the invoice, um, all the line items here and how it was approved. So we have a few different uh, options, all your information in there, which is great. This is a super handy tool for auditors as well because um, we can set them up for like a read only access and they can do all the searching and reporting on your own. This way we're not bugging your accounting team because I know they're, they're, they're busy with a lot of other things. <laughs> so this just about covers our, our demo for today. This is all of the invoice module. Um, and I appreciate you guys listening through it. So sorry real quick just to get this back up we are actually doing a promotional today um if you'd like to see a little bit more detailed or customized de demonstration you can visit the link on the screen um, i'm also happy to send it over afterwards as well um and after you attend the demo then we'll actually send you a 50 dollar amazon gift card so obviously terms and additions do apply to that um you can see that on the demo page uh, but that is the extent of my presentation. So we'll hop into Q&A. So Kristen, I, I do want to ask a question myself. So when you say it goes back to the financial system, so in, their, in this case, it's going to be going back to Sage 100. I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's going to go into their invoice data entry in the accounts payable module, respective module where, where it belongs and they update it from there. That's correct? Yes, correct. That is my understanding of it. Um, and Perfect. I can, yep. Perfect. 
Now, I got to admit, I learned a few few things today myself. Um, I, the last time mm-hmm. I had looked at this, I had not seen the expense section of that. That's that's a really neat tool if you have salesmen that are uh, filling out expense uh, forms for you and you're chasing after them constantly trying to get the uh, the uh, receipts. <laughs> that's always <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes it a little bit easier, right? I know that is a great feature to have. Perfect. Did we have any other questions come up? Um, I did see one really quickly. Um, so, how long does it take to get set up? Um, so, we are pretty quick and easy to get set up, and only takes about four sessions. And there are two hours a piece that includes the implementation and the training of the product as well. Okay, and, and do you have as many people in the training as you want, or is it a, a is it a one on one? Um, it depends. It's a, it's up to you what you would like to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, sorry, go ahead. Nope, go ahead. And then, um. I just wanted to reiterate as well, the payment methods that we support are ACH, EFT, BCC, or paper checks as well, because I know that's always a, a, a question that comes up as well. Okay, and keep in mind, folks, that, you know, we kept this, you know, to our normal 30-minute session here today. So we just showed a very small piece of this. Uh, the, a more detailed uh, uh, um, presentation will give you the, the purchase order piece and the payment mm-hmm. piece, et cetera. Um, but we wanted to keep it to our normal 30-minute session here, and I think it, it kind of gives us a good taste of what this product can do for you. Um, I know that everybody is, is stretched to their limits these days, and what hopefully can happen um, for you is that you know, if you are uh, scanning your invoices and sending it up there, it, it eliminates a lot of the data entry and, you know, also, you know, maybe some keying errors. But the, the nice ability that I saw today, too, was the, the fact that it is going to learn what, what GL account numbers that these invoices should be posted to, but you can also change them. Uh, maybe for this particular invoice, it goes to a different department or a different expense, that's what the edit feature is for in there. So uh, that was that was really nice. Exactly, and spot on, which is super helpful because I know sometimes adjustments do need to be made. So we like to make it easy, right? <laughs> right, right. Okay, everyone. If if we don't have anything else, I want to thank you all for joining us today. And once again, you can get a hold of Kristen, or if you would like to contact myself or Suzanne Watson, um, you guys can go ahead and do so, and uh, we will get get in contact with Kristen and get a demo set up for you. And uh, hopefully, this will help save some time for you in the in the near future. Beautiful. Thank right. you so much. I appreciate it, everyone. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you all. You all, everybody have a great day. Thank you very much, and bye for now. Bye-bye.